Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Indoor Rock Climbing. This guide is specifically for the styles of top rope climbing and bouldering. The info in this video is taught by Dayon Wheel, one of the top coaches of elite climbing in Maple Shade, New Jersey, and narrated by me, TJ Kurtica of Excess Progression. In this guide, we will be going over basic gear and how to use it, how to tie harness knots, how to belay, how to properly boulder, the different types of holds, climb difficulties and grades, and some beginner and advanced techniques for climbing. By the end of this video, you'll have a full understanding of the basics needed to top rope rock climb and boulder. Let's begin. What is top roping? Top roping is when you climb a route attached to a harness and a rope that is either supported by someone belaying you or an auto belay device. These climbs are more stamina based. What is bouldering? Bouldering is done on a shorter wall and has mats at the base to cushion falls. They also don't require a rope or a harness. These climbs are typically more strength based and are more so looked at as short puzzles or problems to solve. Gear. For bouldering, you want to have climbing shoes and a bag of chalk. For top roping, you want to also have a harness. Most climbs suitable for beginners will have the ropes already set up and ready to use. We won't go too deep into the variances of gear here, but let's go over some basic necessary info for the gear you'll be using. Shoes. Climbing shoes are designed to be close to the toes and have rubber better suited for getting a good grip on the wall and footholds. Most gyms will have rental shoes available. They recommend that the shoes be as close fitting to the toes as possible while still comfortable. As you advance, you may decide to buy your own pair, which will have better features and are made in different shoe types. For now, the rental shoes are more than enough to progress quite far as you get involved into the sport. If your gym doesn't have rental shoes or you simply want your own pair, I've linked to the top recommended beginner pair for both men and women in the description below. Chalk. Chalk is used to keep your hands dry and maintain a better grip on the holds. A chalk bag is typically either a small bag that can be attached around your waist or a bucket that stays on the ground. Both of them have a drawstring closure to help keep the chalk from spilling out. When using chalk, make sure to get not only just your fingers, but your entire palms as well. Chalk is usually added in as loose chalk or in a chalk ball. This is a personal preference. Your gym may or may not offer chalk as a rental. If not, or you want your own, I've linked to a high quality chalk bag and chalk ball in the description below. I've recommended the chalk ball over the loose chalk because you can always pour the chalk out if you decide you like the loose chalk better instead of needing to buy both. Harness. The last essential piece of gear you need in a gym is a harness. Harnesses are the piece of equipment that secures around your waist and legs and gets connected to the rope to secure you safely when you fall or lower down. If you choose to get your own harness, you may decide to get one that has hooks around the waist, which are made to clip additional gear needed for outdoor climbing. The harness you likely can rent in your local gym will probably not have these hooks and are absolutely fine for indoor climbing. Top rope climbing. How to put on a harness. If you're bouldering, you don't need to worry about a harness because there is no rope to tie into. However, for top rope climbing, it's required. First thing you want to do is pick up the harness by the waist loop and make sure it's facing the right way. Easiest way to tell is by making sure the brand or logo on the waist loop is upright. Then follow the straps down to each of the leg loops, making sure that the straps go from the bottom of the waist loop to the top of the leg loops and that none of them are twisted. Then grab the front of the harness to turn it around and check the straps from the front to make sure none are twisted or tangled up. Make sure that the leg loops and fasteners are all facing the right way. Now turn it back around to get the harness ready to be put on. Dayon shares a personal tip to hold the leg loops against the inside of the waist loop and step in one leg at a time to make it easier to step into without accidentally tangling it up. Now pull your harness waist loop all the way up over your clothes and over your hips to about belly button height and tighten the fastener as tight as you comfortably can. Once that is done, tighten the fasteners around the legs so they are secure enough not to move around. How to tie in as the climber. 
The gem in this video makes tying in simplified by doing the knots for you and giving two carabiners to attach to your harness. These ones are called double action carabiners because they take two actions to open. Turn the lock and pull it open. Some carabiners require you to twist to lock. If the gym you're at has the carabiners already set up for you, just make sure both carabiners are facing the same direction. Other gyms may require you to tie the knot directly onto the harness yourself. It's important that you know how to tie yourself in, so let's go over how to do the double figure eight knot. How to tie a double figure eight knot. Take the end of the rope and make the length of it a little over an arm's length long. The exact distance will be subjective to your arm length, so you may need to find your own personal sweet spot. Don't let go of the tip of the rope and twist a loop twice with your other hand. Feed the tip through the loop and pull. It should come out looking like a figure eight. If it doesn't, untie and try again. Now, feed the end of the rope up through the bottom and top horizontal loops of your harness. Get the knot as close to your harness as you can. Now you're going to follow the exact same path as the first figure eight, starting from the bottom of the knot. Now pull nice and tight on both ropes to tighten the knot. For extra security, you can also add a safety knot. To make a safety knot, you grab the rope above your double figure eight knot with your thumb facing up. Take the loose end of the rope and wrap it around your thumb at least two times. Wrap it three or more if you have a lot of extra rope and can. Now slide your thumb out and push the end of the rope up through the hole you just made. Again, pull both ribs nice and tight. How to tie in as the belayer. To tie in as a belayer, you're going to need to use a belay device. In this video, we're gonna go over two very common ones, the ATC and the Grigri. The difference of an ATC and a Grigri is that the Grigri is made with a brake lever to regulate the speed and ability for the climber to come down where the ATC relies entirely on the belayer to break. The Grigri makes it so there's less chance for human error. Before using either, make sure there's a safety knot at the end of the rope so it can never accidentally slip through your device. To use an ATC, first check for the pictures on the side of the device that tells you which side of the rope leads to the climber and which side is for the break end. Now pinch the rope and feed it through the bottom of the ATC device, making sure the ends are correct according to the pictures. Then clip a carabiner through both the loop of the rope and the metal loop of the ATC. Now connect the carabiner to the vertical loop on your harness with the lock of the carabiner ideally facing away from your brake hand. To set up a Grigri, open the clasp and feed the rope around the centerpiece. Again, make sure to follow the pictures on the Grigri so the climber end and brake end are placed correctly. The lever on the device should always be on the left side. Now, Take a carabiner and clip it through the hole on the Grigri. Then clip the carabiner through the vertical belay loop on your harness. Some gyms have anchors coming from the floor. These are used not only to clip the ropes when not in use, but as a way to secure a belayer that may be smaller than the climber from lifting off of the ground. 
If using an anchor, stand at the anchor loop and attach the carabiner to the loop nearest in height. If ever in between two loops, hook to the higher one. Once both the climber and the belayer are tied in, double check each other's work. Then make sure the ropes are not twisted. If they are twisted, not only can it result in pulling the climber away from the wall, but they might fall farther because of it. If everything looks good, you're ready to start. PBUS. PBUS is the acronym to remember to properly belay. It stands for pull, break, under, slide. Pull the rope down from about eye level as the climber continues up the wall. Then pull that extra rope through the break hand. Now release your pull hand and place it on the rope under your break hand. Now slide your break hand up to the belay device and start the process over and over. Watch this demonstration and practice this before someone goes for a full climb. If someone falls or wants to hang there and take a breather, hold the break hand back and to your hip to stop the rope from moving. Belaying with a grigri is almost exactly the same as using an ATC, except the brake lever needs to be pulled back to lower the climber. You can regulate the speed of lowering by how much you open the brake lever, as well as how tight your brake grip is on the rope. No matter which device you use to belay, never take your brake hand off of the rope until the climber is fully back down. Commands. When all checks are done and someone is about to start climbing, the climber makes sure their belayer is ready by asking, on belay? If the belayer is ready, they say, belayer on. Climber then says, climbing, and belayer says, climb on. If a climber needs more slack or more rope, then they will say, slack. If the climber needs you to tighten it, then they would say, take. If a climber wants to take a rest by hanging on the rope, they say tension. The belayer would then respond and let them know that they've got them. If you know you're about to fall, try to call out falling. When the climber is ready to be lowered, they say ready to lower. The belayer responds lowering. And finally, when the climber is on the ground, they say off belay. Belayer says belay off. How to come down. No matter if you have a belayer or an auto belay, coming down is the same. Grab the rope with both hands, lean back, and guide yourself down with your feet. When you're done with a wall, remember to attach the belay device and climbing carabiners back to the anchor or whatever system your gym has set up. If you use an auto belay, make sure to reattach the auto belay device to its anchor. If not, it will retract all the way back up to the roof. Bouldering. As we touched on earlier, bouldering is done without a rope or harness. The only gear typically used are climbing shoes and a chalk bag or chalk bucket, which is bigger and more stable to leave on a mat or chair nearby when bouldering. Boulders are shorter problems to solve and have mats at the bottom to cushion falls or jumps. When bouldering, Always check your surroundings to make sure someone else isn't currently attempting a problem that could be too close to you. Some problems can go in a horizontal direction, so always check to make sure your roots don't overlap or get too close. In both top roping and bouldering, two pieces of tape are typically used to signify where both hands go to start a climb. Look for footholds that also have the same color tape or hold. Once both hands are on the holds and both feet are off the ground, you can start climbing. The final hold with the same double tape signifies where both hands should get to to complete a problem. Some problems are completed by topping out, which is getting both hands to the top of the wall. When you're finished a problem, either down climb the entire way back down or get low enough to comfortably jump the rest of the way. You can use any hold to climb down unless you decide to challenge yourself to take the same path back down. Many boulder gyms also have very strong down climb holds to make it easy to get back down. When falling or jumping off of a problem, land either on your feet, compressing your legs like a spring, or roll onto your back. 
Don't put your hands down to catch yourself so you can better avoid any injury. Different types of holds. Jugs. Jugs are holds that you can pretty comfortably get your hand into. Crimps. Crimps are very small holds that you can only get maybe one pad of your fingers onto. Slopers. Slopers are your more rounded holds. They come in all shapes and sizes and don't have much of a grab. Try to get as much of your hand on slopers as you can to maximize the friction you have on these holds. Pinches. Pinches can also come in all shapes and sizes. These are holds that you pinch between your fingers and your thumb to hold on to. All of these holds can be a little bit of a mix of each other. For example, you can have some juggy crimps, crimpy slopers, slopey pinches, etc. Pockets. Pockets are holds that have holes in them which you can fit your fingers into. Chips. Chips are very tiny holds and are typically used for foot placement. Depending on the angle of the hold or the way it's facing can change the name of the hold. Side pulls. Side pulls are any hold that you need to lean the opposite way against from the side to hold onto. Underclings. Underclings are any hold that you hold onto from underneath. They are holds that are only really good if you can stand up and grab onto them from underneath it. Features slash volumes. Features, also known as volumes, are protrusions added to the wall. They typically can be used for any path and are always on, but check to make sure there isn't any tape or marking signifying that they can only be used for certain climbs. Different wall types. Vertical walls. This is referring to your normal vertical wall that simply goes up and down. Slabs. Slabs are walls that are leaning inward. They typically require the climber or boulderer to depend more heavily on footwork and balance. Overhangs. Overhangs are walls that lean outward and require the climber to depend more heavily on core and upper body strength. Arets. Arets are outside corners of two or more walls. Dihedrals. Dihedrals are inside corners of two or more walls. Caves. Caves are walls that are shaped like a cave. They have walls that surround an opening with an overhanging cave roof. Difficulty grading. This is probably the trickiest section of this entire video, but I'm going to aim to make this as simple as possible. Both rope climbing and bouldering have their own grading systems. They are also translated into different systems depending on where you are in the world. For this guide, we'll go over the Yosemite Decimal System for roped climbing and the V-Scale for bouldering, which are both primarily used in the United States and Canada. We'll also go over the French scale for top rope and the Font scale, which is also French, for boulders to cover most other parts of the world. Some countries and areas use their own grading scales, so if neither of these systems apply to you, just look up the system for your area. The Yosemite Decimal System The Yosemite Decimal System starts at 1 for walking on a flat trail, 2 for hiking a steep or kind of tough trail, 3 for a steep hillside that requires your hands a bit, four for an even steeper climb that usually requires a rope to avoid long falls, and five, which is for technical roped climbing with a belayer or auto belay. This is what you're going to find in a rock climbing gym. Now that you understand where we get the five, the decimal number after it rates the difficulty. 5.0 is pretty much climbing a ladder and continues up in grade and difficulty by number to 5.10 where when we're at 5.10, the letters A, B, C, and D start to come into play. So a 510A is more difficult than just a 510. A 510B is harder than a 510A, and so forth. After 510D comes 511, then 511A. The hardest grade to climb to date of this video is a 515D. Bouldering V-Scale The bouldering V-Scale is much easier. 
It goes from V0 to V17 and simply goes up in number. V0 to V1 to V2 to V3 and so on. You may also see a plus or a minus next to the grades to depict if it's more on the easier side or the harder side of that grade. So you might see a V3 minus to depict that it's a V3, but it's a soft V3. Or you might see a V3 plus saying it's a V3, but pretty hard for a V3. The French and font scale. The French scale for roped climbing and font scale for bouldering are both made up the same way. They start at 1 and continue to increase in number. After 3, the letters A, B, and C are added to differentiate difficulties. They also can add a plus or a minus at the end as well. For example, a 4B minus is harder than a 4A plus. A 5C is harder than a 5B plus. Currently, the hardest climb graded is a 9C. All current difficulty grade systems are open-ended and can continue to go up as people achieve harder and harder climbs and boulder problems. Here is a rough graph I got from Wikipedia giving a general comparison of grades. They don't translate perfectly, but this is deemed a close estimate. The most important thing to know about grades is to not let them dictate you or your climbing. Grades are decided based on different elements of a climb. Someone could have trouble with the style of one of the V1s, but could find the style of one of the V2s or even V3s to be in their skill range. Use grades as a general guide, but always challenge the higher numbers. You never know until you try. Beginner and slightly advanced climbing technique. Now let's go over some climbing techniques to get you a bit ahead of the game right off the bat. Use your toes. Always use your toes on a foothold instead of the side of your foot when able to. This will allow you to pivot your position a lot more easily. Keep your arms straight. Keep your arms straight as often as you can. Let your skeleton hold you up instead of your biceps. This will allow you to maintain stamina for much longer. Push with your legs. Use your legs to push yourself up as much as possible. You can do much harder climbs and for longer if you aren't doing pull-ups the entire way. Rest when needed. Make sure to take rest in between climbs if need be. Dayon points out a good rule to go by, which is if your hands are still shaking, you need to take a rest. Foot switches. Foot switches are a move you can do when you need to switch which foot you have on hold. Don't switch them by jumping because it's much less controlled and accurate. The correct way to foot switch is to put one foot directly over the other and let it slide down to replace the other foot as you move it out. Flagging out. Flagging is when you need to counterbalance your body as you reach for the next hold. To flag, put your foot out that is opposite of the hand you are grabbing with. This provides stability when moving on the wall. Smearing. Smearing is when you use your foot to gain friction on the wall instead of on a hold. The more textured the wall you're climbing, the easier it will be for the rubber on your shoes to grip and the easier it will be to smear. Matches. Matching is when you have one hand on a hold and you bring your other hand onto the same hold. This can also be done with your feet as well. Bumps. Bumping is when you reach for a hold with one hand and then move that same hand up to the higher hold. It is possible to bump more than once on certain climbs. Gaston. A gaston is when you have two side poles that are placed outwardly against each other. It results in you looking like you are trying to open something up from the middle. Being able to read when this move is necessary can potentially make or break certain climbs. Some common rock climbing terms. Here are some common terms you'll hear used in the gym. Send. Send is short for ascend. Sending a project means you successfully completed a route. Flash. Flash means you completed a project on the first try. Day flash. Day flash means you have tried it in the past, but on this particular day, you successfully completed the climb on the first try. Beta. 
Beta is the term used to describe information, a successful strategy, or technique advice for completing a route or problem. Some experienced climbers may offer beta on climbs they have completed to others to give them insight on how to successfully complete it themselves. Crux. The crux is the hardest move or sequence of moves in a climb. If you've made it to this part of the video, you now have a full fundamental understanding of top rope climbing and bouldering. Feel free to save this video for future reference. Huge thank you for watching, and if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more rock climbing content. Besides this channel, some other channels worth checking out are Rock Entry, Hannah Morris Bouldering, Geek Climber, and Movement for Climbers. The links to their channels are in the description below, along with some recommended beginner gear. Big special thanks to Day on Wheel for coaching, filming, and demonstrations, Charlie Iovino for coaching and demonstrations, and Anant for letting me film his bouldering chalk bucket. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys on the next one.